All right, guys, it is a beautiful but icy midwinter day here in early November, which is why the little dog and I are packing up our camper and heading down to the Sunshine State, which apparently is getting <coughs> washed away in some huge rainstorm today. Good Lord. Uh, look at a map of the U.S. and look at the Sunshine State, but it is... Friday, November 5th, 2021, and we are going to be wrapping up, wrapping up the 2021 Chronicles of the Collapse today. Now, I know it's Friday morning, guys, and I'm supposed to be doing a Manga Bay Roundup rant, but I simply have too much to do to organize all that, particularly since they changed their format and made it a lot more work. So we're going to just put uh, Rhett Butler and the boys and girls <coughs> on hold. And we're going to come over here to the number one story on the planet. The number one story on the planet from the Washington Post. Those doomers over at the Washington Post. You know, all of these planet eaters... Uh, slapping themselves on the backs, congratulating themselves. Uh, how, what was it, over 100 countries, not even sure if Brazil was one of them. <clears throat> Can't remember if Brazil was even one of them. Uh, slapping themselves on their back, how pretty much the planet is going to end deforestation by the year 2030. End, end it. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, no more deforestation, as they're saying on one hand, while of course, you know, the UN continuing to push biomass burning, otherwise known as cutting down forests to burn them uh, for heat. So on one hand, let's see, they're congratulating themselves on ending deforestation. On the other hand, promoting biomass burning to save the planet from fossil fuels. Oh, yeah. And, uh, of course, one reason might be there will be no trees left in the year 2030. It, whatever we don't cut down is going to die of some disease. It's like every damn tree up here is dying of some kind of disease. But anyway, what is the Washington Post? A little uh, breath of honesty from the Washington Post. This is their review of the, the pledge by the planet eaters to end deforestation. Tell us all about it, WAPO. The world has pledged to stop deforestation before, but trees are still disappearing at an untenable rate. And there you go. On Tuesday, more than 100 countries signed on to an ambitious plan to halt deforestation by 2030 and pledged billions of dollars to the effort. Although world leaders lauded the move, climate activists and anyone else with a brain say they have heard that promise before and that past efforts have come up short the world is still losing massive numbers of trees each year, despite all of these former back-slapping agreements that you've forgotten all about. <clears throat> this is Crystal Davis, director of the Global Forest Watch Monitoring Initiative. Quote, despite ambitious political commitments, oh yes, Despite ambitious political commitments to end deforestation over the past decade, we are still losing tropical primary forest at an untenable rate. We are running out of time to solve this problem. Close quote. She should have said we are running out of trees to solve this problem. <clears throat> Although there's plenty of oil palm trees, I think. I think oil palm trees are doing pretty good, and rubber trees, they're doing pretty good. 
According to Global Forest Watch, the world lost 411 million hectares. That is, 411 million hectares is just a little over 1 billion, with a B, acres <clears throat> of forest between 2001 and 2020. That is roughly half the size of the United States, <coughs> an equivalent to 10% of global tree cover. So in the first 20 years of this century, we obliterated 10% of the planet's forest. <clears throat> in 2020, remember when there was supposed to be a an econ a global economic slowdown from the corona panic. Remember that uh, how the corona panic was going to save the planet from the economic slowdown. In 2020, the world lost a near record 25.8 million hectares. That is, they sh it would be nice if they would do this into acres. That is about 64 million acres lost in the year 2020 alone, almost double the amount in 2001. Trees play a critical role in absorbing carbon dioxide <clears throat> as they grow, thereby slowing global warming. There are a number of ways trees can disappear. Yes, a number of ways trees can disappear. Starting with logging, starting with taking a chainsaw and cutting them down. I know all about that. I've probably made, well in 2020, I probably made 50 trees disappear off of Bugs in a Jar Farm. Let's see, in the past three days, I think I've made about 10 trees disappear off of Bugs in a Jar Farm uh, with a chainsaw. Yes, there are a number of ways trees can disappear. From logging, don't forget wildfires, to being cleared to make way for crops or livestock, or in my case, for a flood control channel. Uh, you will be seeing more trees cleared for flood control channels. Uh, yes. <clears throat> but when trees are cut and, e and are either burned or decay, they release carbon into the atmosphere. According to the UN IPCC, about 23 percent of global greenhouse gas emissions come from agriculture is number one, forestry and other land uses. It is, uh, it, it is getting the trees out of the way to plant more crops for uh, more people and, and oil palm and rubber and uh, paper and, and all of this stuff. It is, uh, it is agriculture more than direct, you know, forestry. Uh, <clears throat> let's understand what uh, we're talking about. This is Gretchen Daly, a professor at Stanford University and the co-founder of the Natural Capital Project. Quote, avoiding deforestation is the best near-term thing we could ever try to do that will keep more carbon out of the atmosphere and help us drive the broader transformation we need. And then next to this story, we have a, another story. Indonesia criticizes unrealistic pledge to end deforestation. Guys, uh, I am smelling, I, I forgot I have my creamed corn my creamed crack on the stove. I gotta go turn the flame off. We are having our very last meal from the Bugs in a Jar Garden for my send off. We're having the last uh, creamed corn from my garden. Man, is it smelling good. Uh, 
I should. Oh, I'm sorry. The Indonesia criticizes unfair deal to end deforestation. All right, so back to the story. <clears throat> there have already been global endeavors to combat deforestation in the past. In 2014, for instance, more than 200 governments, companies, and civil society organizations signed the New York Declaration of Forest, right here in the great state of New York, which called for halving the deforestation rate by 2020 and halting it by 2030. But, Davis said, the world fell far short of that pledge. Quote, we blew through the 2020 targets that we set. I bet you did. Uh, blew through that they were going to have deforestation so that's see, they were going to have deforestation by 2020, and in fact, in 2020, they, we cut down 64 million acres of forest. That sounds like a great way to have deforestation. All right, this is Natalie Walker. Director of Tropical Forest and Agriculture at National Wildlife Federation. Quote, it, meaning this out of control deforestation, is a mixture of lack of enforcement, lack of political will, and the private sector not stepping up. There has not been enough follow through. Close quote. Do you think so, Natalie? Okay, let's go down there to the Amazon rainforest. <clears throat> you know, where Jair Bozo Nero is busy with the bulldozers. The Amazon is the world's largest rainforest and arguably the most closely watched harbinger of deforestation. The rainforest is already 17% deforested, and, and I am going to hit the BS detected button here. If I had a BS detected button, I would be hitting it. Uh, Manga Bay, had, three or four years ago, Manga Bay was reporting that 20% of the Amazon rainforest has, has been mowed down. 17% uh, my culo. But anyway... Uh, According to this uh, survey, the Amazon rainforest is now 17% deforested and losses there are especially pronounced in Brazil, which lost some 1.7 million hectares. So I got to go through here. That's about 40 million acres of rainforest in 2020 alone. You know, with Jair Bozo Nero, 40 million acres. So, Yellowstone National Park, I think, is 1 million acres. So, imagine a hunk of uh, rainforest 40 times the size of Yellowstone National Park uh, hitting the ground in one year alone during a, an economic slowdown. Although, of course, we all remember that famous quote from the Brazilian Environment Ministry to use the corona panic as a cover story for riding the cattle through uh, the deforestation loopholes. Okay, I've already forgot who Walker is. <clears throat> if you're looking at the area cleared, Brazil is usually the worst, Walker said, and of that Cattle, cattle is the single biggest driver of loss, and this is the reason your old uh, <clears throat> doomer does not eat beef. I absolutely love beef. The re this is the reason I do not eat beef is because beef cattle, the number one driver of Amazon deforestation on the planet, Although my guess is soy 
and more and more you're going to see uh, palm oil uh, creeping up, if not surpassing cattle. <clears throat> All right. Walker notes that starting in the mid 2000s, I thought the mid 2000s was 2050. I guess I misunderstand the concept. I guess so the mid 2000s, maybe she means 2005. Brazil saw about a decade of positive momentum on the issue. Quote, there was a suite of public and private measures that was aiming to encourage production away from the forest frontier, she said. Close quote, but in recent years, that has been reversed. Yes, it has. Uh, then we have another associated story, deforestation rising in Colombia five years after peace deal. And Manga Bay has had uh, many stories. They had a story last week in some other country that, ironically enough, that war is, is it, the, one of the best ways to stop deforestation is civil war. Uh, because these planet eaters, uh, you know, are scared to go in there. And as soon as the Civil War, once they uh, declare these peace accords, uh, th then it's just open door to the planet eaters. Uh, all right. Let's, uh, uh, let's have more war to stop the deforestation. There we go. There, there's a great cure for deforestation. Civil war. But I do think we're going to see a lot more civil wars coming up here in the near future. My guess is that civil wars are going to do as much or more to stop deforestation in the 21st century than any one of these joke uh, political agreements in the UN. All right. New research shows that last year, despite an economic recession, you know, from the corona panic, Brazil reported a 9% jump in its greenhouse gas emissions. The principal factor was deforestation, the authors of the new report uh, show. South America, however, is far from the only region experiencing deforestation. Of the 10 countries that have lost the most tree cover since 2001, only two of them, Brazil and Paraguay, are Amazonian. One of the places where Walker says trees are most at risk right now, take a wild guess, well, you could guess 25 different countries, is the Democratic Republic of Congo. That country has a large amount of remaining forest, but high deforestation rates due to practices such as agricultural clearing, fuel wood harvesting, and logging, quote, the Congo is under threat. And again, Manga Bay, as you know, called it three years ago, that um, the Congo rainforest, the second biggest rainforest on the planet, will not exist in the year 2050. It won't exist. Uh, I have uh, no doubt that's correct. Okay, but let's, let's don't forget Russia. <clears throat> Russia is another area of concern. About half that country is covered in forest, and it has topped Global Forest Watch's list of tree cover loss since 2001, with almost 70 million hectares lost since 2001. So that's 70 million, 100 and 40, 155 million acres of uh, forest has been uh, obliterated in Russia so far this century. Walker said, quote, a lot of that tends to be for timber because it's, you know, it's too cold to turn into agriculture. 
While much of you know the logging in Russia may be managed timber timber practices, at least a portion of the logging is probably illegal, she said. And with such a large area, quote, it is difficult to police effectively. And I don't need to get into my broken record rant about the difference between illegal and legal deforestation. And I'm, and I'm virtually 100% sure that if you dug around in this bullshit and deforestation, that there, there, there's massive loopholes that you could, as the Brazilian environment minister said, you could drive the cattle through. And, and my guess is they're talking about ending illegal deforestation. It was, you know, Philip Fernside in Manga Bay, when was it, a couple of months ago, writing that not really tongue-in-cheek article. Uh, just, just make all of the illegal deforestation going on on the planet, make it legal. There you go. Uh, there is no difference between illegal and legal forest, uh, cu cutting down forest. A chainsaw is a chainsaw, okay? Uh, there is no difference between legal and illegal forestry. Uh, it, it, it's one of the bright green lies. Get, get the notion uh, uh, of legal cutting down a tree uh, out of your brain if you haven't already. Okay, so who is the primary consumer of Russian timber? If your answer is China, give yourself a gold star. China is a primary consumer of Russian timber. Walker said that points to China's broader role as a purchaser of commodities linked to deforestation, whether it's Brazilian cattle hides or palm oil from Southeast Asia. All right, but of course, we have uh, we 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 have some, we have some hopium, guys. Uh, you know, if Washington Post obviously is not going to keep going, so Washington Post goes looking for hopium in this story, and guess where the Washington Post has found hopium? Pakistan. There you go. We're going to find some hope uh, about the collapse of the planet in Pakistan. Yes, yet the news isn't all bad. Pakistan, for instance, is in the midst of a, quote, 10 billion tree tsunami reforestation campaign. Yes. <clears throat> the Pakistani project is a combination of tree planting and forest protection initiatives that have previously proved extremely successful. And then do not forget the poster child of the uh, apocalyptimist, that would be Costa Rica. Okay, I, I have lived in Costa Rica for three years and seen with my own eyes the big, fat, green lie of Costa Rica. Uh, okay, anybody w w with three brain cells thinking that Costa Rica is, is some sort of, uh, I, I, I don't know what, I, I don't know what people's idea of Costa Rica is who have never been there. All right, it is an orgy of deforestation. <clears throat> In Costa Rica, the government has been paying farmers to protect forests near their farms. Yes, the, the project was among the five inaugural winners of Prince William's Earthshot Prize, which highlights creative climate solutions and comes with a one million euro prize. Congratulations. These efforts point to Walker's contention that, quote, there does not need to be this trade-off between economics and the environment. Okay, we have another bright spot. All right, how about Indonesia? Indonesia is another defore. <laughs> it 
Indonesia is another deforestation bright spot. Yes. While the country is still losing forest, largely to palm oil, Walker said, quote, they are doing much better than they were. All right, I can't resist it, guys. We're going to, uh, we're going to break into the hopium. What did I just see right next to this story? <clears throat> Indonesia criticizes unfair deal to end deforestation. I love it. They, you know, their president, Joko Widodo. Indonesia has criticized the terms of a global deal to end deforestation by 2030, signaling that the country may not abide by it. Indonesian environment minister, that's somewhat like saying uh, the, uh, the, the chipmunk protection minister, Sancho Panza. Indonesian environment minister, Siti Bakar, said, Indonesian authorities could not, quote, promise what we cannot do. There you go. She said forcing Indonesia to commit to zero deforestation by 2030 was, quote, clearly inappropriate and unfair, close quote. Despite President Joko Widodo, I, uh, you know, Joko Widodo, that, that is the single greatest name for a planet eater I have ever heard. Joko Widodo, despite Widodo signing the forest deal, the environment minister said development remained Indonesia's top priority. All right, so getting back to uh, the hopium. Well, my, uh, I guess my, uh, I guess my uh, computer has heard enough of the hopium. And uh, anyway, I think we get the picture calling Indonesia and Pakistan and, and, and even Costa Rica bright spots. You know, the definition of a, uh, of a bright spot uh, in, in the year 2021, uh, you know, if, if you lose your sense of humor, you're going to end up like Michael Rupert. Uh, the only thing left to lose uh, for doomers is our sick, twisted, dark sense of humor. Uh, acting like the UN uh, is going to end deforestation by, by the year 2030. It, 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 it might be the single biggest flat-out, bold-faced lie coming out uh, of that whole crock of shit uh, dog and pony show over there. It, it, it's, it's an absolute lie. And we won't even need to wait till 2030 uh, to, to see it. So bring on the civil wars, bring on Mad Max uh, to slow down deforestation. But anyway, guys, it looks like the ice is starting to melt out there in my front yard. So I am going to pack up my little camper and the little dog and I, we are heading to the Oasis of Freedom, the now rainy sunshine state. We should be back in the Point Lonesome Swamp in about 10 days. So come see us in the Point Lonesome Swamp. And now I just need to convince this uh, computer to read my video card. This is my last challenge here get out there and uh, start a civil war to end deforestation while you still can. Bye, guys. All right, little dog, that was our last rant from Bugs in a Jar Farm in the year 2021. Are you a happy little dog about that? You should be. That should make you a happy little dog. No more ranting from Bugs in a Jar Farm for six months. Tell the folks bye. Bye, guys.